And good afternoon. I am Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 index for Monday, May 24, 2021. Well, the best laid plans sometimes are just blown away by the market now, aren't they? I came in yesterday and I put the B wave here and the completion of minor B of intermediate wave four, and we're gonna start going lower and minor five of the C wave and get this all done and then zip up higher in the intermediate fifth wave. And the market came in and said they definitely have different ideas this morning and that I, once again, was too quick on my count. And I'm gonna share that with you because I'm guilty of it, even though I have been an Elliott Wave analyst for 40 years plus. And it just, it just happens because I, I reviewed it, I looked at it, I thought, but I counted these little internals as the complete thirds and they weren't. So I did it both in the NASDAQ and in the S&P. I apologize, but remember that I did say that the S&P still runs the, the possibility that it's gonna turn, take back all that decline from Friday in the globex session, basically. And that's exactly what it did. It kind of paused a little bit when it got up towards that high again, but then it broke it and it just rallied. And what really led us to kind of look at that more, uh, more hard yesterday or give it a, a better look was the fact that the Dow, the Dow actually led things today. Now the Dow is only 30 stocks. Many of those 30 stocks are likely in the S&P 500 and some of them are in the NASDAQ. But I kept wondering, why are they going after the Dow? I, I searched, there wasn't any, I did not remember hearing any news uh, over the weekend about these companies or even about the market or, or what people should be getting excited about. But it appears that they were excited about NVIDIA's stock split being announced and working out the numbers and the math to see where you can get in and how you can protect your position, et cetera. And just a generalized comeback into the market because the infrastructure package is likely gonna be uh, passed into law the president will sign it and it'll get implemented. And a lot of people are gonna get back to work. Our tax bases will increase again. We're gonna get back to normal. The country's continuing with the vaccine. Positive, 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 better go buy the market. Now, <clears throat> that is not uncommon uh, of, of a mindset in a fourth wave. In the fourth wave, as we are seeing, you get a lot of those people that are jumping back in, and particularly in a, in, in a decline, right? So this one is actually in a rally. So they're jumping back in to the rally early because they think, well, look how close we are. We are going to go to the highs. We are just heading higher. And then it does a one, two, three, raw off the cliff. And that's what I still think is out there to happen. So characteristically, this B wave has done nothing but deceive, but, <clears throat> but drawn in large moves of buyers coming in steady, even though today it was low volume, which fits cleaner with a B wave than it would with a third wave, than it would with another impulse wave, which we would expect much higher volume. Like right now, when the market's going down, that's an impulse wave down because of the correction that we're in. But you'll notice that when we're going down, the volumes double real quick. Everybody wants out. Well, they didn't double on the way back. So there's still a lot of people that are like, I'm glad I'm out. And maybe they, because they realize we still got some more downside to do or whatever, they're not convinced. But here we are. Now, what can happen? The first thing that it did is, I, as I said yesterday, you just reverse your uh, Fibonacci extensions so instead of running it from the top of where the uh, intermediate fourth wave began, you run it from, we've got to run it from the bottom where the A wave began, because we're still in wave C of B. And that C wave is related to the A wave in terms of Fibonacci comparisons and levels. So I put those back on. And you can see that 100% which is the most common relationship between a C wave and an A wave is that wave C will be equal in length to wave A. Boom, hit it on the nose today. I believe the high was 407. And the 406, give me, give me what's it? Yeah, 406.25. Maybe in the, in the uh, micros, it was 407, 4207. 
but we're right at 4206.75 is where it's 100%. It got to 4206.25 and then turned lower a little bit. Now it's still kind of working like they're not sure what they got to do. The markets are just opened again in, in the Globex. They're not off to any races. They're not too excited about doing anything, which basically really spells the whole day today. That was an intense up move. I got to give you that. But it didn't just kind of go, oh, we're going, even though it appeared that way. And the moving averages backed it from the hourly to the 30 to the 15 to the 5 to the 2 and the 1. They were all aligned, all pointing up. And that was how it went, although it didn't go quickly. It kind of inched up a little bit came off a little bit, inch a little bit, came off a little bit, all within the same move. Then suddenly you're not looking and it goes pop. And then it goes up five or six bucks. Then down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, and then pop. So you had to really be sitting here paying attention or have a position on and just walk away and leave your, your position in line with a stop and, and an exit strategy. In any case, not the easiest day to trade, but not the most impossible either. So what am I looking for for tomorrow? I think it's like we've gotten right here, but it, the market can certainly, certainly, it's not backed off of this thing all that much. It dropped back down to 94 for after hitting 4206. So it really just dropped 12 bucks right off of that level. Big deal, big deal. Um, and then has rallied back up to 4201. So again, we're sitting right in the middle of the two. So we're not getting any signals of anything. So we must leave open the possibility that the market will go above 4206.75. Anywhere up here can complete it and you can make your own uh, resistance lines in here and you can use a lot of different things. But the next Fibonacci resistance comes in at the 1.236 level. So that would be where wave C is equal to 1.236 of wave A and that's 42.42. So that takes us back to new highs very possible the B wave would be an irregular. In fact, it can get up to 4264 and still be a, uh, an irregular B wave with a C wave decline still expected. And that will be because the structure will remain in A, a B, and a C. So what would be extending would be the C wave, and it would be the five of the C wave is what would truly be extending. Now, if this thing comes down far enough, and starts breaking below levels where I don't believe that it should. For example, if this was a wave three and this is wave one and that's two, well, if this is gonna put in a fourth wave, it cannot go below 4,178. 4, Can't, because then it's no longer a fourth wave and it's no longer you know, a third wave going up and we're gonna expect higher numbers. Not gonna happen. So that's why I continue to label those in ABC because the structure itself is lining up in that direction. Now, if it just takes off from here and gets up here and decides to pull in a little bit of a wave, then that's a different story and we'll deal with it then. But right now, that doesn't seem to be what is going on. So again, we stand back, we let the market tell us. I certainly can't tell them I'm not big enough and I certainly don't have a large enough account where I could stop them from doing what they're gonna do. So you go along with them. Let them tell you, let the market tell you what its intents are. Usually can be pretty clear, sometimes a little bit deceptive, but nonetheless, as a day trader, clear so that you'd be able to get in and out of positions and make some money. Not always easy, but you should be able to make some money. So upside, I think could be limited, first of all, right to here, a little bit, a little spillover, you know, maybe even up to 16, 17, okay, and then turning down, that's all gonna work. <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me, but the next Fibonacci level is 42.42 to 42.64. That would be the zone. And I would expect that that's where this B wave would be contained. If it gets up there and it just keeps got this energy that we're just going to go, 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 go. Well, we will continue to trade it and we will continue to label it, but we'll have to wait and let and see what the market is saying. At those times, we have continued resistance up above, uh, not unheard of 1.618, not unheard of. And that takes us right to 4,300, not unheard of. And it can do it in an irregular B wave and still flip this thing over and take a nosedive. All these things are still out there to be happening. So, but if it does go up there, why would we just sit and let it happen without trading it? 
it should be very tradable and you should be able to make decent money. Now, so that's our upside. First, maybe stalls out right here and then turns lower. Otherwise we've got this zone and then we have this zone if it really got going. So, but downside on the other hand, we're gonna be looking for it to start breaking below moving averages, break below 41.75, break below 41.62, break below the 50, break below the 200, because it's going to start falling in a C wave. And the C wave will be five waves. One will be down, two will be up, three will be down, four will be up, five will be down. Waves one, three, and five will then subdivide into their own five wave structures in the direction of this trend, which will be down. Okay. So, we need to get the confirmation from the market on the hourly chart in the form of an initial five waves down. That's likely gonna form wave one of C, but we still need to see it to get some confirmation that the, the top for now is in, okay? So that's what I will be looking for. And we're gonna to continue to look for that when the market starts to drop, very interested in the pattern that it produces. Uh, so we have our upside marching orders. We have our downside marching orders. I'm going to leave it there <clears throat> and say continue to trade what's in front of you. It's very, very important. Continue to use the tools as we have described. The moving averages are perfect tools. They were all in alignment from the hourly down to the one minute. They were in alignment with one another to go up. They all pointed up. They all moved up. And in fact, during the rally, the, the S&P and the NASDAQ basically hold to the, the uh, four, four day moving average and the eight day moving average. They provide the support and the market will just walk the rally up. In this case, because it was going up and they will, oh, and you'll just see that four and the eight just cruise along the bottom side of it. So when that stays in place, no matter what you think and how overbought it might be, it's not giving it up yet. It's not giving it up until it starts to be on a five minute chart. It breaks below its eight day moving average and the others start to hook lower. So that would be a key. It did not happen today. So I told you to stick to the buy side. That's where you're going to make your better trades and more money. I'm going to leave it there. Our next update will be Tuesday, the 25th.